Are you wondering how you know what you need thyroid hormone replacement? Maybe you got some recent labs that don't quite look right to you and you don't understand what's going on, or you think that you're just not getting tested the way that you should. Maybe you have a lot of symptoms of hypothyroid, but your lab tests always look normal or your doctors don't think you need thyroid hormone replacement based on your lab values. My name is Dr. Terranella, and in this video, we're going to look at how you know when you need thyroid hormone replacement. We're going to look at some of the obvious cases and the subclinical cases of when you need thyroid hormone replacement. We'll look at the TSH, T3, T4, or first T3 in similar types of tests. Again, my name is Dr. Turinella, and I'm making these videos because I enjoy helping people go beyond just the basics. Whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis, I enjoy helping people connect the dots on what's going on with their health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormones, et cetera, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. All right, now for a quick disclaimer. The information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's connect the dots on understanding when you need thyroid hormone replacement. How do you know when you need thyroid hormone replacement? Well, there are a few different instances when thyroid hormone replacement is obviously needed, and there's a few scenarios when it would be considered subclinical hypothyroid and thyroid hormone replacement would be suggested or possibly indicated. So while lab values are very binary, black and white, and can potentially give a clear yes and no answer as to whether or not you need thyroid hormone replacement therapy, they always have to be looked at in accordance with the human in front of you. So the context of what's going on with the person, symptoms that are going on and things like that. There are things that are non-lab values that would warrant using thyroid hormone when it doesn't seem obvious from the lab results and vice versa. There are things in someone's makeup that may warrant not using thyroid hormone even when the labs suggest that they may need it. So context is always key, but we're not really going to look at those more obscure types of scenarios but just a reminder that the context of what's going on with the person is always key. So with that being said, we're going to look at some more obvious case scenarios and some of those subclinical case scenarios where these are indications that usually thyroid hormone would be needed or potentially helpful. So first, the more obvious cases. In previous videos, we came to the understanding that TSH is inverse to your thyroid hormone. So when your TSH is high, it usually means that you need some thyroid hormone support, that's what your brain or pituitary gland is asking for. So when you have high TSH and low or low normal free T3, that would be a clear indication or a, a good indication to use some thyroid hormone support and see whether or not the person is benefiting from that. In some cases, that TSH may only be slightly above the 2.5 mark, but the higher it is, the more obvious there is a need for thyroid hormone support. And the same thing with the free T4. So at 0 0.9 or less, it usually means you need some thyroid hormone support, even though the reference range starts at 0 0.8. The lower the levels on the free T4, the more obvious there is a need for thyroid hormone support. So we said that the brain is going to produce more of this TSH when the T4 ends up feeding back to the pituitary to tell it that it has plenty of it. <clears throat> now, sometimes this TSH may only be 2.5 or even less than that, but still the circulating T4 is actually low. And in that situation, the thyroid itself may not be responding to this TSH. And so it's just not producing enough of that T4. There's many reasons why that might happen, but the simple thing to do is to just take more thyroid hormone. So again, the obvious cases for thyroid hormone support are low T4 and then high TSA. It's within the reference range or very close to the high end for the TSH and the low end for the T4. The other thing is with the conversion from T4 into T3, so a frankly low T3, less than 2.0 would be an obvious case for thyroid hormone support. But in that case, instead of using the T4 thyroid hormone support, you would use the T3. And in these videos that I'm making, I'm referring to the free T4 and the free T3. There's obviously non-free versions of these tests as well, but those are usually not as helpful as the free because the free is the bioavailability of that thyroid hormone. So in continuing on with our discussion and how you know when you need thyroid hormone support, 
let's look at some of these subclinical or non-obvious cases where thyroid hormone support may be needed. So there are case scenarios where that TSH may be actually low, like I said, less than 2.0, even in the one range, but the T4 is actually still very low, even below the reference range. And so in that case, you know, a lot of times when you just get the TSH with reflex to T4, you're never going to see that. And that type of hypothyroid is often missed because they're never doing the actual T4 tests. So make sure if you're having a lot of thyroid symptoms that you get the actual T4 test and some of these other tests that I'm going to be pointing out. The other thing that I mentioned is there's bioavailable or free versions of these tests in terms of free T4 and normal or, or total T4 output. So the test is thyroxin test. So you want the free thyroxin test. Otherwise you may have a, for some reason, one reason or another, have an increased thyroglobulin output and the thyroglobulin is going to bind up all of that T4. And so your free or bioavailable T4 may be very low, but the total looks actually normal. So it's important to get the free versions of these tests or bioavailable versions of these tests. Now, sometimes that T4 and TSH actually look really good but the conversion of that T4 into T3 is not so good. So in that case scenario, you have a functionally low active thyroid hormone because the T3 does all the carrying for the thyroid hormone output. So that person is left functionally hypothyroid, even though they don't look like they are on the labs. And that's because the T3 carries out all of the heavy lifting for the thyroid hormone. It carries out all the activity of thyroid hormone. The T4 doesn't do much of that at all. So in the peripheral tissues in your body, basically the T4 is converted into T3. But if you're not making that conversion well, usually what's happening is you're making more of this reverse T3. And that can happen when your body is under more stress, whether it's physical stress from inflammation, fighting infection, things like that, or it's psychological stress, not sleeping well, stressed out for one reason or another. So if your T3, free T3 levels are less than 2.0, that means you're very, very low. And that's a more obvious indication to just give the T3 below 3.0 on the free T3 would also be an indicator or suggestion that you may need more thyroid hormone. But remember that context is always key. Not everyone with a low free T3 should be given thyroid hormone. For instance, maybe there's a really high reverse T3. And again, that's going to go up with high cortisol, high inflammation, and things like that. So if you just give thyroid hormone replacement, especially if it's just the T4, well, it's just going to go right back into this reverse T3. That reverse T3 doesn't actually get used. It doesn't function as thyroid hormone in any way. Now you could give more of the T3, but the body is basically trying to not make that because it's basically converting into this. So depending on the, the case scenario, how low the levels are and what's going on with the person, you may or may not want to give any of that thyroid hormone. So again, the context is always key when you're trying to understand how you know when you need thyroid hormone replacement. So how did I do? Did you get a better understanding of when you need thyroid hormone replacement therapy? Maybe there's a specific scenario that didn't cover or something that needs to be clarified from this video. Let me know in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.